On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Margaritaville at sea is not going to sea. Instead, she's wasting away in the port of Palm Beach as the U.S. Coast Guard issues a no-sale order. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglana. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So if, if you don't know anything about me, I will tell you this, that I am an ultimate parrot head. I have been a follower of Jimmy Buffett for years. And when I say this, I mean full bore. I mean, it's been pretty hardcore. I mean, the day before I flew out to go adopt my son, I was at a Jimmy Buffett concert and I had just gotten word about the adoption a day before that. So I'm pretty hardcore Jimmy Buffett fan. However, I will say that I will note that Jimmy Buffett has become the most commercialized aspect of the worst you can imagine. And one of his newest endeavors made the headlines just the other day. So he has started a cruise line that works in conjunction with Bahama Cruise Paradise Line. And back in April, the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise was the first new cruise ship of this new brand, the Margaritaville at Sea, uh, 1,680 passenger vessel that was set to do two-day voyages out of Palm Beach to the Bahamas and back. It was really ideally focused with post-COVID. Uh, they basically took an old Costa cruise ship, refurbished it, decked it out with all the Jimmy Buffett accoutrements. So, you know, you have the, it's five o'clock somewhere lounge and, and all those aspects. And the ship was set for these two day cruises, which were perfect, especially in the post COVID environment, because by the time someone tests positive, you're back in port dumping everybody off. So in terms of marketing and strategy, a great idea. However, we have a problem with that in that the most recent cruise wound up not happening. And so let's talk about this story. So there are a lot of websites out there, YouTube channels that do cruises and, and cruise information and they're great. And I'm not gonna list them because there's, there's a ton of them out there. But my website, what I do here on this YouTube channel is we look at commercial shipping and I'm gonna look at commercial shipping a little bit different and something you should know about the cruise industry that would be useful to you. So this is the vessel in question, uh, Margaritaville Paradise. You'll see right here, this is from Cruise Mapper. So I use a lot of times marine traffic, but there is a site specific just to the cruise ship industry. And that is Cruise Mapper. And it gives you a lot of information on specifically on cruise ships. So yes, you get the location of the vessel, just like you normally do with AIS. But you also get things like deck plans, cabins, news, and, and even previous accidents. So here's the information for her. So she's Bahamian flag. Ship was built back in 1991, 31 years old, which is on the older side for cruise ships at this time. She's home ported out of West Palm Beach. Cost about $335 million to build back then over at Fincantieri, where she was uh, built in Italy can house anywhere between 1,300, 1,500 passengers, a crew of about 650, 13 decks. So she is a moderate size cruise ship, nowhere near the size of the behemoths that sail out of Lauderdale and Miami. We're not talking about a uh, Royal Caribbean Oasis class, uh, nothing of that size. And as I mentioned to you before, she was a former vessel of, uh, of Costa, uh, the Costa Lines, which is a subsidiary of Carnival, and then came over to Bahama Cruise Lines, uh, Bahama Paradise Cruise Lines, and now this ship is sailing in conjunction with Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville at sea. This is the story right here from Travel Pulse that the CEO of Margaritaville at sea told local news outlet WPTV earlier today that the Coast Guard placed a no sale order on the cruise line ship Paradise at the port of Palm Beach. Coast Guard revealed the reason for the issuance of the order. Quote, this is the Coast Guard saying this, cruise ships operating the U.S. are required under federal law to have a certificate of compliance exam every six months. During this ship's annual exam, port state control officers identified conditions which required the ship to stay in port until rectified due to the safety of the crew and passengers the ship will not sail until conditions are rectified. This order was issued on Wednesday, July 13th, uh, with passengers already on board. So the scheduled departure was canceled. 
And now plans are hoping that they'll be able to sail this weekend for their next voyage. So a couple of things in here, let's talk about here. Port state control and certificate of compliance. I've talked about this in previous videos, for, but for those who don't know, there's an entity under the United Nations called the International Maritime Organization. And the International Maritime Organization has a series of memorandum of understandings and agreements with countries. One of them is with the U.S. Coast Guard that the U.S. Coast Guard will do certifications and inspections on vessels, even though they're not U.S. flagged. Again, Margaritaville at sea is actually a Bahamian flag vessel, but because they operate in and out of U.S. waters, take U.S. passengers on board, the Coast Guard will come on board. And in this case, they come on board every six months to receive a certificate of compliance. This is the webpage for the United States Coast Guard's Inspection and Compliance Division. This is what they do. There is a series of inspectors within the U.S. Coast Guard who board foreign flag ships and do these inspections. And I will say that cruise ships get probably the closest scrutiny of nearly all the different types that come in and out of U.S. ports. And what you'll see here is the Coast Guard tracks this and they will hold vessels. This is the vessels denied entry. This is part of the port state control. So these are vessels that are actually barred from entry into the United States. And so the Coast Guard tracks this. At the same time, the Coast Guard does local inspections and we'll expect to see the uh, Margaritaville at sea pop up when the July uh, vessels are here. You'll see back in June, a series of vessels were pinged by the U.S. Coast Guard, an LNG, the Port Harcourt of Bermuda, the Hand and Trader of Philippines, the AAL Gibraltar of Cyprus, Ruby Tea of Malta, and the Green Ocean of Panama. And then they'll provide a report for that, which you can download, and we'll be sure to come back and take a look at that. And then you have these flagship detentions where ships are held. They actually, they're not allowed to go. And what's really interesting about this list is that this covers uh, U.S. ships, and these are the U.S. ships. These are the U.S. flag vessels that are held, including several vessels operated by the U.S. Navy by the Military Sealift Command. Back in April, the Wally Shira and the Amelia Earhart, for example, there are on that list. There is a system done by the, the Coast Guard called the Port State information exchange, which allows you to tap in the vessel's IMO number and pull up the report. This is the report for the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. Just pulled it up for you. And one of the things that they were talking about here was their basically their certificate of compliance. The certificate of compliance for her expires on July 23rd, 2022. So the Coast Guard had come on board. They had issued this a year earlier, back in July of 2021. And so they came on board to perform this inspection. And this inspection usually involves making sure that firefighting systems, life-saving equipment, all the material that a ship would need in case of an emergency meets those requirements. Now, they haven't posted the issues at play here. However, because of this system, you can go back in and look at past instances of issues. And back here, what you're seeing here <clears throat> is past incidences with the ships, not current. These aren't the current issues, but these are the past issues. I've pulled it up as of today, July 15th, 2022. But again, nothing is, is showing up as of now. I actually pulled it up to, to, to tomorrow's date. I did today's and tomorrow's, but nothing is showing up now. But I think what's really important is to see what this ship has been flagged for in the past. So back in September of 2021, and again, remember, this ship has been inspected as of July of 2021. But back in September, during a normal inspection, the ship was flagged with a couple of issues, including right here, improper lack of maintenance on fire safety equipment. So this was an issue that the New Orleans office found when the ship was sailing out of New Orleans that they found. Uh, same time, they also found issues with life-saving equipment on board. And you'll see right here in the notes, they talk about this, all external high-pressure fuel delivery lines between the high-pressure fuel pumps and fuel injectors shall be protected with a jacketed piping system capable of containing fuel from a high-pressure line failure. A jacketed pipe incorporates an outer pipe into which high-pressure fuel pipe is pl uh, placed, forming a permanent assembly. Obviously, that material was not there or not in sufficient 
manner to catch fuel should a high pressure fuel line break in terms of life-saving equipment. Again, this is back in September of 2021. All lifeboats shall be properly constructed and shall be of such form and proportions that they have ample stability in a seaway and sufficient freeboard when loaded with their full complement of persons and equipment. The uh, Port Safety Control Office observed, determined damage gel co coating resulting in visible fiberglass fibers in way of the hull and or keel, meaning the side of the boat had some abrasions showing raw fiberglass, and that raised some questions about the stability of the vessel. Again, back in September, fire safety and proper lack of maintenance. Fire doors in main vertical zone bulkway, uh, bulkheads and stairway enclosures shall satisfy the following requirements that doors shall be self-closing and shall have an appropriate uniform rate of closure of no more than 40 seconds and no less than 10 seconds with the ship in upright position. If you're going to cruise ship, there will be these large metal doors that are open all the time. They'll always be open. You'll see them open all the time. And what holds them in place are large electromagnets. And what happens in case of a fire, when they trip them, the power to them cut off. And those doors shut. Now, you can still open them, but they shut. And the idea is they create fire boundaries. They're heavy steel doors that are meant to isolate fires. And if those doors don't work, if they don't release, if they don't shut in a, the required amount of time, that's going to be an issue. Going on back here to the September cases that you see here, another one, fire safety, lack of maintenance. In a ship in which oil fuel is used, the arrangements for the storage, distribution, and utilization of the oil fuel shall be used such as to ensure the safety of the ship and persons on board. The Port Safety Control Officer observed significant fuel oil leaks on the number one diesel generator, number two diesel generator, and number four diesel generator. The leaks were apparent at the fuel oil tanks and were dripping at a rate of several drips per second. So ships have two sets of power plants. Again, come back over here. To this vessel, uh, when you when you look at this vessel, let's take a look at, there she is. When you take a look at vessels, vessels have two sets of power plants. There's the ship propulsion plant. This is the diesel engines that propel, propel the screw. This provides the propulsion to move the vessel through the water. And then you have diesel generators that provide electrical power for the vessel itself, for the hotel services, for your rooms, for everything. And you can cross connect between the two, but you usually have separate systems for this. So you have a main engine room, which has all the propulsion for the vessel and then an auxiliary engine room or a machinery room, they call it different things, where you have diesel generators to propel uh, the lights, the, everything you need on board. Well, obviously in the inspection that was done back in uh, September, they found oil dripping from three of what I would assume is four of the diesel end generators. Not sure how many diesel gener generators she has, but that caused a problem. Now you will get leaks from generators and stuff like that. That's fairly typical. I mean, you know, gaskets wear and you get this, but obviously it was excessive enough to cause a problem. And this inspection that she was on now is a larger inspection. This is a big inspection. When they come on board to do that certificate of compliance inspection that you see right here, that is a large inspection. And obviously the Coast Guard flagged this vessel for one or several issues enough to issue the no sale. And what the no sale means is the vessel has to correct this before it's allowed to go. Now, let me be clear about something right here. This is typical. This happens a lot on vessels. Vessels will get a no sale. Uh, you know, there are things that can be caught. And this is one of the reasons you do this is I'm not saying this sh ship is trying to get away with anything. I'm not saying that at all. Well, let me be clear about that. That's not what I'm saying. Ships get no sale orders all the time from uh, Coast Guard and other port state control agencies. Uh, it becomes an issue with cruise ships because cruise ships are on such a tight schedule. They're always, you know, very few days in port, they're out the next day. So very thin window of margin. And usually it takes a few days to fix some of these uh, issues because you got to bring in crews, you got to repair, depends on what the issues are. And so cruise ships will get dinged with this quite regularly. Usually you schedule these type of inspections to coincide with a down period, a maintenance period. So you have a little bit of time to fix anything the Coast Guard or the other port state control will have. Well, this ship just went in service in April under the new banner. 
And obviously you don't do the port state control compliance inspection until it's expired. And so they didn't. And so that's what's caught them here. I am not telling you the ship is unsafe by any means. That's not at all. That's not the issue. This is why we do this. This is what is meant for the separate eyes. The Coast Guard is not a interested party. They're the, the separate. This ship could be going into the Bahamas or into you know uh, uh, the British Virgin Islands. And that compliance check could be done there. And you would hope it gets caught there. It depends on where the port state agreement is done. So this is not a ding at all. Again, I'm a huge Jimmy Buffett fan. I, I, I love Jimmy Buffett. I want to take a cruise on this vessel. I'm looking forward to doing it. But especially for older vessels, and this is an older vessel. She's 30 years old. But that's not a, a hindrance at all to the sailing of a vessel as long as it's well-maintained. But these issues do come up. And I think it's really important to do it. One of the things I always suggest people do is take a moment before you go on a cruise and type in that ship's name and number into the PSIX, that port ship information system, and see what are the issues going on with that ship. What's the history of that vessel? Has there been a lot of issues associated with in the past? Small issues like this, and I would tell you the ones I read you are fairly small issues that can be rectified very quickly. But there are some vessels that may have habitual issues going on. We've seen a lot of issues recently with cruise ships. We had the fire on board a carnival ship at the stack fire. We had a uh, Norwegian vessel hit a small growler or a, a cav off a, a glacier up in uh, Alaska. Uh, things happen. I mean, it's a ship. A ship will have mechanical issues associated with it. I think the good thing for this story, believe it or not, is that the Coast Guard, the unheralded service of the U.S., is doing their job. And they are overtaxed, underfunded, undermanned, women, I don't know what the right term is now to use for there, underpersonneled, uh, to do the job they do. We need more inspectors. We need to do more port state control inspections on vessels coming in out of U.S. ports. The problem is Coast Guard has 11 missions, and they're tasked to do all 11 equal, and it's not the same. So I hope it didn't scare you off the cruise line. I am hoping I'm not banned from uh, the Margaritaville at sea. I hope to be on board there someday. But again, I just wanted to use this story as an example of how you can use some really good information that's out there to get some good background on ships before you embark on them. If you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you did, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, contribute to the page. It helps support the page. It allows me to buy a ticket to go on Margaritaville at sea when she's back out at sea again. No, I'm kidding. I use the funds for this to, to support the channel, to do the research, to do everything I need to do to bring you the news. And you can do it by two ways. One, you get that super thanks button below and give directly, or you can head on over to Patreon and become a patron of the channel. The link for that is at the end of the video and in the show notes. So our next video, this is Sal wasting away here in North Carolina.